I'm Isha and I'll be moderating today's session. I request the audience to keep their cameras on to make the session more interactive. And before we start with the session, I would like to give a small introduction about our speaker. Dhawal Gandhi is a user experience designer at Walmart. With over nine years of experience spanning across many related areas like UX design, consulting on strategy for digital channels, digital product and service design, including mobile interfaces, information architecture, interaction design, user research, and project leading to business process redesign. He has worked for a variety of clients in the business intelligence, e-commerce, education, healthcare, media and telecommunication domains, and in different industries, namely startups, corporate, service company, and research institutes in the US, India, and Italy. Today, he will be guiding us on how to make a UX portfolio. Over to you, sir. We are glad to have you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Aisha, for the short introduction. Um, let me share my screen, uh, guys, and uh, let's get started. Um, yeah. Can you see my screen, all of you? Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. Perfect. So uh, thank you, all of you, to join this session. Uh, you know, I'm Dhawal Gandhi, as uh, Isha mentioned. mentioned. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be giving you a walkthrough of how to make an awesome UI UX portfolio. So it's been a while that I'm in the industry. It's been nearly 10 years now uh, that I'm, you know, designing and doing research uh, in different uh, organizations like Geo, then Forbes, then uh, ThoughtSpot, and now I'm working with Walmart. And uh, working with all these companies, so there's sort of lot of learnings that I have got. Um, so like not only from the hiring perspective, but also from the design culture perspective, uh, the lot of learnings that I have got uh, throughout this journey. Um, interestingly, my journey started back in 2010 when I pursued my master's in the field of uh, human computer interaction at the University of Trento in Italy. And that's where, you know, uh, like my um, career started in design, came back in 2013, 14, and it was a very tough time for me to find my first job. And that's where I decided to become a mentor. So I'm, I'm teaching as well uh, from last six years, and I have mentored more than 180 students from 30 plus nationalities. Um, one of the key initiatives that, you know, I've been working from the last two years, it's kind of supporting Indian designers through non-profit initiatives. You might have heard of ADP list and anybody can design. Um, this place is where we support people, you know, to review portfolio, to share design templates and help them to become, you know, the world-class designer. Uh, that's nearly about me. Uh, last year, I in, in the COVID time, I have become a father uh, as well. And perhaps you might hear my daughter's, uh, you know, uh, voice uh, in the background. So please forgive me for that. So yeah, that's about me in that show. So today, uh, you know, we'll be learning a lot and I want to keep this session engaging. So my request is uh, to all of you is uh, to speak up. So there's one thing that I have learned throughout my journey as mentor, okay? It's one thing, which is the most crucial thing, especially in Indian industry. So I have taught, uh, as I mentioned, 180 plus students, but uh, you know, the biggest challenge for Indian students is like, like they, they do not speak up, meaning that they, they have kind of an anxiety or a kind of a blocker. They feel that, you know, uh, people will judge, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and perhaps there is a, something, a kind of a, also blocker from our, uh, the way that we have brought up as well. So I would encourage all of you to speak up. I'm not going to judge you for sure. And you should feel free. And we want to keep this session fun, not kind of a you know very boring session like as an expert talk and all. Okay, uh, this session is for you, and uh, you will certainly see you know how magical portfolio you can build. But I need one thing from your side is just an engagement. You can share your thoughts. You can share uh, your questions. Anything that you want. Okay, throughout this session. So do not hesitate. And that's the only request I have. Is this clear? Can you say yes, all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So one more thing which I need to remove from this is like, sir. So can you say just yes? Yes. 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 Cool. Yes. I'm the whole only, and uh, I'm not sir. So I'm the whole. Okay. Cool. So let's look at some fundamental questions that you know we have always, and these are like pretty big questions. 
okay and this becomes a kind of a big blocker also most uh, with most of the you know uh, designers also with experience or without experience doesn't matter these are the most commonly asked questions so let's start with one so why do you need a strong design portfolio i want to hear from you please share i'll ask so many questions why do we need a strong portfolio can i can i also keep answering dhawal yeah rohit please yeah. feel free to answer i think uh, that's because it's the first step uh, to you getting evaluated by uh, someone who is in the corporate world in terms of potential opportunities for them right absolutely correct so this is the first thing that people see you know uh, when they evaluate your profile that's correct any any other thoughts hey guys i think pick up it's actually show uh, our thought process and how do we actually think and so the more detailed a project is uh, the the better understanding we have of the project and the better understanding the hr gets from our projects right about that's us. correct that's correct so essentially if you look at uh, there are many reasons you know why we need to have a very strong portfolio the first is like uh, to showcase your skills and strengths yeah when it comes to design you know like in indian industry you may see like you know uh, everyone wants to have a complete designer when i say a complete designer there are three essential skills that you need to have first is the research research is all about understanding the user and the business okay the second skill is all about the design itself where you do low fidelity prototype high fidelity prototype etc okay and the third skill which is the most important skill is the validation skill which is like you you need to validate your designs with the end user in different ways okay um when you want to present your skills you want to make sure that all skills are coming out you know hey asha one more thing like you want to record this session so maybe um if other people who have, were not be able to yes sir um, this session is being recorded yes. yeah okay so um so as i said like you know uh, you need to showcase your all skills and strengths right and and a portfolio is nothing but it's your personal identity yeah so there are two directions that it works okay and this is interesting and this has worked with me purely uh, in 2014 it was a very tough of time for me to you know find a job and i got a job in chennai um, see i'm basically from gujarat but then i was in europe for 3 years and then i came back to you know gujarat it was very tough for me to you know settle down in chennai because of the climate only so what i did after that so i wrote a couple of articles on linkedin on that time and with that one article i got three jobs in 12 days and the companies were jio flipkart and datawave now why i said this so there are two essential directions that you have one direction is you know you apply for a job and you keep waiting you know there's a big queue always you know we see and we keep waiting uh, answer nahi aa raha hai hr ka kuch response nahi aa raha hai company ka kuch response nahi aa raha hai this is what we have in mind this the second direction is you build a strong portfolio you build your strong identity and let hr find you this is the second direction now choice is yours aapko pehle wale mein jana hai ya dusre wale mein jana hai right it's all up to you which direction you want to choose right i chose second direction because i felt pain it was very tough for a time for me to find a job first job i gave 45 interviews in 3 months time so many rejections and finally i landed a job but that's where i realized that i don't want to get this pain again and that's where i decided to you know get interview calls rather than you know giving and applying for uh, uh, the job is this clear guys yes i want to hear yes at least in between yes, at least yes yes, 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 sir. Okay. yes, sir. yes sir. now which option do you prefer option 1 or 2 option 1 that's option about two. applying for the job option 2 you get interview calls which option two. do you prefer 2 option 2 option 2 option 2 that's correct well done so we have to do some hard work for option 2 let me show you how we do that so the fundamental question again we have is you know how many projects do we need to have in portfolio any ideas how many projects uh, around 4 to 5 4 to 5 any other numbers around 6 6 good projects 6 okay one or two be of the best and then uh, 
different ones but three should be really interesting three should be best right yeah. so rohit we are kind of close by at least we should have three projects <laughs> and uh, you know it's it's just about you know you should not go for quantity it's all about quality but and essentially there is no magic number so that's why i mentioned you know there is no magic number uh, and three projects works well but these three projects needs to be diverse enough so we'll see that what kind of projects that we need to have in our portfolio right if of course you can have more projects but it does not help less also might feel like you know you have not done enough work okay so three is a kind of a number that you should be chasing for the next uh, question that i have is like what type of projects should you keep in your portfolio any thoughts what type what types of projects you should keep think 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 and share i, and yeah, I have a question no one is going on, to uh, judge I, i have a question on the previous uh, slide yes so we mentioned the minimum amount of project should be about 3 but is there a ceiling on maximum number also which is say 6 to 8 are good anything beyond 8 is a distraction what what do you suggest see i genuinely feel like more than 5 is a distraction because the more the project okay. you have uh, the the chances are pretty higher that you know the the reviewer the hiring manager will get deviated but so, if this is in case of um, we are talking about fresher students who are applying yeah absolutely for sure only and and when it is experienced individuals uh, what should then the ideal uh, so for individuals like? also uh, you know there are different techniques for individuals uh, it up, it's up to you know the role that they are applying for example if it's about a leadership role then their entire portfolio style will change it won't be the same it will be more of a, a you know showcasing uh, various projects with the impact and with the short summary it won't be a detailed project as well yeah but when it comes to freshers and for you know the beginners uh, role ideally you know um, less is more uh, meaning that uh, should not exceed more than 5 that's what i i mean that's my opinion because the more the work you have the more deviation that uh, you know the hiring manager will have uh, might have different okay. opinion and thoughts okay any other questions guys um i've also put it on chat senior students uh, people who have placement season coming up i see the juniors uh, more excited about asking questions would nudge you to ask questions because some of these things are going to haunt you uh, shortly as compared to uh, the junior i tell you one thing which is kind of crucial for me uh, guys you know when i came back to india and i struggled for my you know first job uh on that time i realized the importance of someone helping you know uh, me so on that time i connected through idf a mentor and i connected hari uh, he is the person you know whom i discuss about my pain because uh, on that time uh, the problem was like in india if you know photoshop or illustrator you are the designer whereas the learning i got uh, in europe was uh, you know if you do problem solving then you are a designer that was completely opposite so that's where hari helped me to understand indian market and you know what i got a job from hari only i worked with him afterwards in chennai so meaning that you know you have a wonderful opportunity today to you know open up ask questions um and 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 be ready for you know your journey right that's clear yes cool all right I, so I, i have a stupid question uh, dhawal and i'll also say why i call it stupid because i don't come from the world of design um i come from the world of business so i have a limited understanding about design but within each of these portfolio how many pages should i ideally be there how yes, long we should will, we yes we will yes we will cover everything in detail sure, sure. Uh, we i have kept everything uh, so what i'm trying to do is like i will start with the basic questions then we will see you know the detailed sure, demo sure. of what is good portfolio and what is worst portfolio and then we'll see the checklist what you should have in each and every case study that you design sure. so it is a kind of a concrete uh, you know learning Stupid. we'll be covering uh, rohit the same part yeah all right so how what kind of projects that we should have guys feel free to speak up problems uh, maybe a project in which we are solving a social problem social problems that's correct any other Oops. things a passion project probably a passion project that's wonderful 
see there are different types of projects that we see okay um and and this is again you know a combination of uh, what you can do and what industry expects okay so you design a product from scratch you design a product a feature which you add in existing product that's a second type of project and third type of project is do you redesign an existing product okay now there are different types of devices that we designed for right ideally it can be a responsive website or android app or ios app i have kept this three only right now but you, of course you know it is extended to other devices as well it can be for smart tv or smart watch as well yeah but ideally you know this is what we see in nutshell yeah now when we think about all this the, the best combination could be like if you if you were to you know design three case studies what kind of uh, three projects that you can have the first is like design a digital product from scratch and perhaps it can be a responsive website right then uh, when you think about add a feature in existing product you it can be an android app and then redesign existing product it can be ios app see when you look at from the hiring perspective right the hiring manager will understand like you have designed everything and your portfolio becomes more diverse right and it helps hiring manager to give you high score based on your diverse work is this clear guys yes sir hello yes sir. yes, yes. yes. Cool. So now, uh, you know, again, I like the idea of keeping, you know, the social projects or the passion project, but I have this question and maybe many of you would have also this question, like what projects to put in portfolio, like that comes in my mind, you know, like even if I have to create for my own. See, this is the big thing that you are going to learn. Okay. And this is again from hiring perspective. So I was leading a team in Forbes, uh, you know, uh, last year. And I was setting up a team in India office. In that, uh, we had a hiring opening for the you know junior role. We got around one hundred and five applicants. Okay, out of one hundred and five, can you tell me how many would have been selected for the interview process based on the portfolio? Any number? How many of them would have been selected for just interview, like based on the portfolio? Fifteen. Fifteen. Ten. Any other numbers? Three. Five. Three, five. So three is correct number. We just sorted it, it three. You can imagine. It's very difficult to find good designer in India. Okay. And that's where there are a couple of things that you need to consider when you, you know, have some projects in your portfolio. So your project needs to be simple. It should be easy to understand. Let me give you uh, an example. Okay. Let's say if I say, uh, you know, you have to design a time travel website. Do you, any one of you understand what is time travel? Yes or no? No, sir. Okay. Um, so if you don't know what is time travel, it will be the same for the hiring manager also. Meaning that if you choose a very complex topic like time travel, people cannot understand that. You have to explain the topic in detail before they understand. And that creates a big trouble. If they don't understand, how can they judge your work? Is this clear? So keep your topic simple. If I ask you a second example, a fruit basket, okay? What do you think about fruit basket? What it is? Can anyone tell me? Fruit basket, just by name. Speak up, speak container up. Container which holds fruits. Fruits, okay. Fruits. So it's an e-commerce store for buying fruits. Can anyone understand this easily compared to, you know, time travel? Is it yes. understand? Yes, Why? Sir. Because we use Grofer, we use Flipkart, we use Amazon, right? We use other products, right? Similar to this. So we can relate and resonate right? easily. And it becomes easier for the hiring manager also to understand this project. If you keep complex project, believe me, it is very tough. People keep AI, VR, everything. But how many of people would have experienced this, right? Very few. If they don't have experience of it, how can they judge? It's not possible. It's not possible. Yeah, even though you weren't, you would have done amazing work, but your portfolio will get get less score. So keep project simple. That's the key learning from this side slide. Okay. Should I go next? Any questions here? Okay. So, uh, but if you're applying for like a tech company, uh, what they demand from us is that we should be familiar with the latest technologies that are there. Uh, so in, in that particular case, uh, sh should we still take the uh, approach of the fruit basket or 
I mean, we, See, we can... uh, I guess that, that's an assumption. I feel like, you know, company demands for your awareness of, uh, you know, uh, all the, the, the recent technology. That's fine. It's about awareness. It's not about assessing your skills. Meaning that, you know, let's say, for example, how many of, uh, you know, how many companies does work on AR and VR these days? Very few. I don't say that it, it will not emerge or it will not grow. It will go grow, but not at this moment. Now, let's say, for example, you are applying for a company called Lending Card. Okay. Now, they, you are having a portfolio consist of, a, you know, a project of a, a smart, uh, you know, a device which can, you know, do AR or VR, something like that. Now they do not have that knowledge even about AR or VR. How do we, how do they judge your work? You get it? So what I'm saying is like awareness is one part which is critical. You can have that awareness about tech, but at the same time here, the objective is to make sure that they understand your skills, design skills, right? Now, how do they judge your skills is based on what you put up in your portfolio. Now, if it is easy to understand, then it becomes easier for anyone to you know, understand. So that's the reason Awareness is one part. You can have awareness about what is happening in the market from the tech perspective, but at the same time, you have to keep projects simple and it should match the existing scenario. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Thank you, sir. No problem. So my next question is this, where should you build your portfolio? Can anyone tell me? I have a special note for Dribble. You will like it. Okay. Yeah, guys, say, where do you, ha, ha, okay, let me ask this question. Uh, where where have you built your portfolio? Behance. 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 Nice. Any other platforms, guys? Indiefolio. Indiefolio, that's a, an Indian platform from Kavan. Wonderful. Any other one? Think, 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 think. Shay. Medium. Even if you have not built, uh, if you know other platforms where you can build. Medium. Medium, wonderful. Behance. Behance. Okay, let's look at uh, some, you know, examples. See, the most preferred one is Medium and Behance. Okay. The reason why is it's pretty simple to put up your work. Okay. At the same time, if you have your work in Medium, you get a kind of more, you know, uh, visitors coming from Google or Medium as well. So the visibility of your portfolio will be pretty high. Okay. By the way, guys, don't take notes. I'll be sharing these slides with you. This is for you only. So don't worry, you will have an excess of the entire slide. That's why I have kept also the branding of, you know, uh, Avantika University. So feel free, okay? So the most preferred tools are like Medium and Behance. Uh, you know, it's free and it's easy to use. You don't have to put a lot of efforts, but you know, sometimes you do want to have your portfolio with your domain name. In that case, people use Wix and Squarespace. Okay, these are again, a little bit easier compared to Webflow. So these are like recommended paid, paid tools. If you have some sort of skills, like especially, you know, uh, like HTML and CSS, then Webflow is better. All right. Webflow gives a lot of customization. Whatever you think you can do it in Webflow. It is literally like that. Whereas that does not happen in Squarespace or Wix. But yeah, a special note for dribblers. We cannot present our case study in Dribble. Is this clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Great. At least you can raise your hand also. I can see. Okay. Cool. So now it's time to see a good portfolio. Are you ready? Or we should skip? No, sir. We are ready. We're ready. Cool. Ready, so sir. what I'm going to do, uh, there's one mistake that I have done, but yeah, we'll cover that. So unfortunately, the banner of other portfolio did not change. But yeah, it's fine. All right, so yeah. let's wait while, while it loads. So this portfolio, uh, you know, that I'm going to present right now, uh, it's a one dedicated case study, it's called Mirror, okay? And there are two folks, okay? One name is Spencer, another name is Cole. So they've worked on the same project, okay? But let's look at like what is good and what is bad, okay? Mirror is a project which is all about a clothing website like Mirror, um, like Mintra, okay? Where you can buy clothes online. Okay, and Mirror is a company which is kind of having offline stores, so many stores available, but they now want to start, you know, their digital footprint. They want to build a store from scratch. Remember three projects, three projects type I mentioned, a project from scratch. This is kind of that, and this is a responsive website. Okay, let's look at this now. 
So, so if you look at this has been built on Medium, right? And you can see uh, moving a clothing retailer store online, right? A detailed UI UX case study. It has been published by Spencer, who is my student only. And you can look at the banner. The banner itself gives a kind of a very strong engagement. Is that correct or wrong? Correct, sir. Right. After that, what he does, so he explains what this project is all about. See, your hiring manager will not be aware of, you know, what this project is all about. So you, they need to know uh, about your project and it can be very, you know, a simple and concise. Then you define the problem statement. See, as a designer, we are a problem solver. That's correct or not. What we do is we solve problems. So you need to have a problem statement. Then every case study has a scope, right? So essentially you make sure that you work on one detailed journey. Okay, you can't have just two or three screens in your case study, that does not happen. You need to have one journey in detail, meaning that in case of Mirror, it's a, an e-commerce store for buying clothes or apparels, okay? Now, when we think about buying clothes, the main journey here is purchase journey, right? So if you look at after, you know, he defines the score, he has also explained the process that he has followed. Do you know about these steps, guys? Anyone, what these steps are? Uh, design methodology. Design thinking. Design thinking framework from IDEO, right? Where we have empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and testing. So that's what he has followed here, right? And then after that, he has explained the project KPIs. What this project KPIs means? Anyone? What is KPI? What is KPI, guys? Uh, key performance indicators. Okay. And uh, what? why do we need that? So it basically shows uh, what a business or um, or somebody is trying to achieve. So you can actually measure the success of your project based on the KPIs. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, and that's correct. See, ultimately, when you design something, it has to have a kind of a connection with business, right? And you need to measure the impact of your work. Now, how do you measure uh, impact of your work, right? With some matrices. So for example, in case of clothing website, right? It's about... You know, he wanted to make sure that there is a feature called try and buy, he wants to measure success through that and also the proper purchase journey. So basically all the metrics is related to, you know, purchase journey, right? Now, now the stage one starts. Remember the empathize stage from the design thinking? That's where he has put up, you know, details about the secondary research. Now you conduct a secondary research where, you know, you try to identify so when you start any project, you don't have knowledge, right? For example, let's say you're designing uh, an organic store, online store, which can, you know, help people buy uh, groceries online, okay? Now you might not be aware of grocery or you might not be aware of organic market in India. What you will do, you need to do a self-research. And, and, and that self-research is more about secondary research. So basically you try to understand what is there in Google and, you know, search from that, and then you get, your knowledge building up, okay? And then you summarize what are the key learnings that you have got. This is a kind of a summary that you see, yeah? And after that, you do competitive analysis where you try to understand the competition, who are the competitors, what are their core strengths and weaknesses, and then also you evaluate their features as well. Then, uh, you know, the empathize means you try to understand your users and you try to understand the business part, right? Um, and you need to, you know, uh, get into get into the shoe of users, right? So in, in other words, you need to understand users, and and there are many methods for that, right? Um, user interview is one which can help you understand users better. Any other methods, guys? How do you know your users better? Through surveys. Surveys, then. Observation. Observations like ethnographic Shadow. studies. Shadowing. Then. Shadowing, wonderful. Hey, you guys are wonderful. I mean, you have been doing all this. That's wonderful. Any other techniques? Diary study, right? Or contextual inquiry. All these, all these are, you know, primary research techniques which help you understand your target audience. That's it. That's the objective. But let's say, you know, you have done that study, but you need to understand, you need to put here, what are your core learning? So you make sure that you put key takeaways Okay. You don't publish the entire big report in your case study. Even if you have a big report, you can keep as a simple link. Okay. Then based on that, you build up your persona, right? Then you have the empathy map. You try to, you know, understand your user in detail. Now the second stage, it's all about defining. Okay. Where you try to define your project goals. You have the feature metrics where you list out all the features that you 
want to have and you define the priority and you see also the metric squad right uh, whether it is costly and it has a high impact or low impact right this is a feature roadmap and then based on that feature roadmap you can create this feature matrix where you can choose, you know, identify what features that you need to work upon, right? Ideally, we go for high impact, high cost, and high impact, low cost. These are the like the sweet spots, right? Which we, you know, go for. And, and once we go ahead with that, we need to have an information architecture or sitemap. There are different, uh, you know, styles of that. Any style would work, but this one is the detailed one, which can showcase, you know, the page that you have on your journey. And it also showcases, you know, the components for each pages you're going to have and how these pages are connected, right? So till now, what we have done is like uh, define, okay? Now the stage three is all about ideation where we do, you know, the task flow, the user flow, the, um, you know, scenarios, and then, uh, you know, to be journey or the paper sketches. Look at the paper sketches quality as well, okay? Are they good or bad, guys? Bad. Bad. Anyone else? They are also quite detailed. Like they are also quite detailed. That's a wonderful observation. And also it's not too good as well. That's also a good one. Yeah. It's pretty detailed. People should be able to understand from paper sketch itself, like what you have done. And, and if that is happening, then your sketches are good. Okay. All right. Then after you do paper sketches, you do tool based wireframes. But you look at like all over the screens that you see here in the, you know, um, in the information architecture, like homepage, listing page, product listing page, product detail page, cart, all these screens are mapped here. All right. Now look at these screens. How are these screens, guys? Good or bad? Good. Or very good or extremely good? They are good for a low fidelity wireframe. Right. It's absolutely good for low fidelity wireframe and it helps people immediately, you know, get that feeling of wow, you know? So this is a, like a, a you know tool based wireframes and when you design for responsive website you should always have mobile version you cannot have just desktop version okay because mobile variation will differ a little bit the placement of all the features and functionality or component will change right now this is a, like a logo that he has defined spencer has designed yeah and this is the final variation that he's going with and then look at this one this is the style guide or the design system where he is defining all the, the colors, where he is defining all the typography, all the button styles for all different, you know, states. How is it, guys? Good, bad, ugly? Pretty organized. Yeah. Pretty organized. What are your thoughts, guys, till now? It's, it's very detailed. It's pretty detailed, Sahil. Yes, you're correct. And that's where, you know, you look at the prototype. This is about the visual design. Look at the screens and the imagery, the visual hierarchy, the use of typography, the use of colors. Look at just this. Right. How is it? Any thoughts here? Uh, you can call it homogeneous with each other, each, each, uh, each screen. Right. I don't know. I was muted. Uh, everything is fine. Guys? Hello, hello, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no, it looks great. Oh, so what, what I'm trying to say is like, you know, this is a kind of a visual design that you can expect, you know, if you do a detailed work, right? And then at the end, we have the testing part, the validation part. So you provide details about, you know, the task that you are, you know, asking your participants to perform. And at the same time, you also try to showcase what they have shared. You also try to identify what are the pain points and what are the good points about your designs. And you try to list them, right? And then what you want to do as changes after that. And then the next steps. This is the first case study of Spencer, okay? Now, the interesting part is like Spencer is based out of New York, okay? And if you look at uh, his portfolio, the entire portfolio, a part of paper sketches, everything is really good. Is that correct, guys? Or you agree with me? Yes. Yes. yes right? sir. And you know what has happened? So after uh, he started applying for the jobs in just three weeks time, in three weeks time, 
he got three job offers in new york and all of these job calls have happened through medium only he was getting lot of calls from medium and uh, linkedin so why i'm trying to you know convey this because if you have a very high quality work believe me the hiring manager or the recruiter will be behind you okay all right let's look at the another case study of mirror okay the same project the same clothing website i want to get your opinion on this okay so it starts with this simple banner how is the banner guys minimalistic minimalistic any other thoughts and let's compare with uh, you know the spencer's case study which one is better so the size and the size of banner is very small in the screen so it is not uh, that much visible so exactly yeah. it's not much visible because of this is screen size right all right now let's look at the project background and goals so the biggest challenge uh, you know you have when you are kind of you know writing it in very concise way it becomes kind of very difficult for the reader to engage with that right so you need to make your case study as your story it's a story about your project right it cannot be very simple like this as well right it is just like build a website manifest a logo and build app this is the scope of project this does not look really good right whereas if you look at this one it is clearly mentioned about you know like a heading about project then problem statement and then the scope is precisely defined so people can understand this immediately this is pretty you know badly done now the research part what do you think about research guys Have, it's again the same problem right like if you look at there is no process here right at the same time research needs to be you know called out like look at this presentation right and look at this one you can't understand anything literally you have to put focus on reading all this content and then after that you will learn something about what is the research outcome the competitive analysis it's it's fine the secondary research so this is the secondary research only and again you have to put really lot of effort to understand what is the secondary research what he has done and what are the outcomes similarly one on one interviews it's very difficult to understand again here right you need to do a kind of a very detailed work see this is one on one interview of spencer i'm doing side by side comparison to make sure that you learn like what is good and what is bad look at like what he has mentioned also here like how many people that he has interviewed where they are coming from what is their age age range and who they are and then the key learnings he has published here right it's kind of clear but here you don't have to get you don't get that clarity this is persona how's the template guys it is nice clear and descriptive right that's absolutely good and that's absolutely true but do you identify one problem with this template and with this template and let me just show you another template see So whatever the you know deliverables you have it needs to have the same language throughout your case study meaning that you cannot come up with different styles or different colors you should not use it so if you look at this all the colors that you see inside all of these are brand colors of the mirror only look at this colors as well look at this colors you don't see any extra color whatever the colors that you see here the small small you know bars or etc everything would be matching it feels like cohesive and harmonic look at this as well is this clear what i'm trying to say is like though the template is pretty good but because these colors are kind of new it's not of mirror project in cole's case it does not you know connect right similarly information architecture then the user flow the project goals the you know feature matrix which one looks better the spencer's one or cole's one yeah which one is better guys and let me just show you paper sketches is this good paper sketch no no do you understand anything from this no no no, no. it is worst it is worst right now if you create this and you expect a call from company believe me company will not give you a call that's reality you need to have a proper paper sketches it takes time it's fine but make sure you have high quality work right it will help you look at the wireframes it is certainly better than you know the paper sketches but it is not still up to the mark and look at the number of screens that he has done he has just done the home page and category page you cannot have just two screens in your case study with two screens you cannot pitch your skills 
right? You need to have the entire journey, end-to-end -end journey. You need to have more screens, right? And look at the mobile screens, only two screens again, you know, these are like two screens for tablet. Then the design system, do you see this design system? Is it better or which one is better? Spencer's one or Cole's one? So the Cole one. Spencer. Why? Because that was pretty comprehensive, giving all the, and it was helping you engage with that, right? This, it kind of looks pretty, right? Then the usability thing. Do you identify where the problem And this is the visual design. Would you like to build your portfolio Spencer or Cole? Like Hello? Spencer. Like Spencer or better than that? Better than that. Excellent. That's what I wanted to hear. Now our okay. Essentially, um, you know, what, what I wanted to, you know, make sure is like Cole is a, is a fantastic person, but the problem with him is like, he does not care about and the problem with him is again, you know, he does not have enough. So that's why he's not good results. If you don't spend enough time, if you don't come up with good results, believe me, recruiters will not give you a call. Remember my story of, you know, selecting only three, four out of 105 out of 405. And that was too tough. It was messing my time. As a hiring manager, I do not, you know, go pain again. And in India, now the situation is super worst. Like you don't have Hiring a good designer is a big problem. If you have a good portfolio, believe me, be so many companies like Amazon, uh, Microsoft, they will be behind you. Even though if it's fine, it's fun, properly fine. I have teach, I have taught many students who do not have any experience in design, have got wonderful jobs. That's absolutely fine. We have a good portfolio that it is possible. Okay. Now let's look at the list. So now let's assume might have some portfolio ready or you might not have. How many of you have portfolio ready? Do you have portfolio in play? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, mostly we all of us have. All right. So most of us have, right? And um, if, uh, you know, um, most of you guys have the portfolio. In case, uh, you know, you might want to uh, uh, revise if you think you, you know, one or two points, or you think like, you know, you want to, you know, add additional stuff perhaps can, which can help. What I have done, and this has been helpful for students as well, get a checklist. Uh, this checklist is more about, you know, like understanding that in your portfolio, okay? If you follow this, essentially what will happen is you have to worry about, you know, uh, what is kind of required, what, you know, requests will see, et cetera kind of much easier to follow all right now if you look at this checklist i'll definitely show you okay guys as i have shared uh, i said earlier share the figma link only with all in the chat so you can you know um have that link always with you uh, you can refer these slides anytime yeah. so if you look at uh, the case study checklist it consists of the topic that you need and there's a, some note. is it mandatory or optional yeah now if you look at you start your case study with about where you have project summary. Green means mandatory. Yellow means optional. The how might we statement, as a designer, we are a problem solver. With problem statement, we cannot design. We need to have that. Project scope, it's optional. If you want to keep it, it's better. Process, it's definitely required because especially, you know, a hiring manager is going to judge you on this, whether you have followed the process or not. The KPIs, Again, it is required because we design for impact. Yeah, the vision, again, you know, it's not mandatory. Then we have empathize phase, empathize phase where you have a secondary research, competitive analysis, user interviews, user sonography, all these things are based on your project. Let's assume that it's a, a second project. The first type of project is about creating things from scratch. Second type of project is all about adding feature. And third type of project is all about you know, redesigning your uh, existing product. Think about redesigning. In that case, you know, you heuristic evaluation at the initial phase itself. Try to understand problems are in existing design, right? That's where it helps. Yeah. The two is all about different stage where you define your personal empathy map. You have you have project goals, 
have as this journey we have feature uh, you know roadmap all of this we see we have not seen the SSA, but you can find it on google you might be aware of that inform architecture or site this is mandatory ia you cannot sign yeah then in ideation you have crazy eight you have the task flow you have the user flow you have the pepper coaches i have explicitly mentioned high quality don't do that you know simple one you make sure that you know you are making it for the presentation side and they should feel wow for that wow you need to create high quality web sketches mid fidelity wireframe again high quality it should be yeah and should not have any colors and uh, uh, imagery etc but just go with the you know grays and uh, white that should work the prototype phase is all about style guide and the visual design that's it yeah and then the testing phase is all about usability testing that you know mostly we use right and design changes based on the ut and then at the end of you know closure of your case study you can mention what are the key learnings that you have got in the project what is the impact that you have seen what is what are the next steps that you have for this particular case study and you can also request to share the feedback with you uh, you can also put up uh, you know your dribble or uh, you know linkedin link where you, they can connect with you so ideally what happens if you have these links underneath your you know case study at the end uh, those who are like interested to hire you they will reach out to you all right is this helpful guys yes sir yes yes sir you can say no also okay i mean i am asking this leading question <laughs> that's a uh, <laughs> wrong but yeah, i am just trying to you know engage with you all right so the next thing i have some tips for you also these are like very strong recommendations okay go for quality not quantity you might have 10 projects it does not make any difference have three projects which has the highest quality and you get a job for sure keep your writing simple as if you are explaining to your parents meaning that the biggest problem that i have seen so far in case studies like if you have your writings very complex people do not understand if they don't understand again the problem is the same how can they judge your work right demonstrate your skills with high quality presentation make sure that you know like we we saw spencer's portfolio the way he presented you know the learnings from secondary research was also good right from interviews also he has created a separate you know a design for that in figma he has also created the positive and negative outcomes of usability testing in figma that requires extra efforts but that's worth it will help you so go for high quality presentation people should feel wow because this is the first touch point of you of your personality which can help you you know get interview calls okay and don't become a triple designer so don't design for triple you can post things there it's absolutely fine but yeah don't become a triple designer and then last thing uh, like don't get into the ui ux debates people talk a lot about what is ui and there is a difference between ui ux and all this you know unnecessary stuff you are a designer you solve problem and you improve life human life and that's your duty so just think about that do not get into all this you know unnecessary stuff focus on you know acquiring all the skills which are necessary to become the best designer and best of best version of you and you know uh, focus on improving human life through your work that's the kind of a mindset will help you become the best designer and also it will help you grow in the industry i have some resources also guys for you i have spencer's portfolio i have megna uh, she is a wonderful designer from uh, from uh, mangalore mangalore yes and she is working uh, right now in german company she has done amazing work and arti padmanabhan she is basically from chennai and she has got first job in dubai all of these people are you know not coming from ui ux field uh they might have some sort of design background but that does not make you know any difference what i am trying to say is like look at their work and see and learn from that and build your awesome portfolio right and then there are free case studies templates uh which we have prepared which we have shared with many folks uh, you can also use that so these are like templates so you can use it easily of course you need to change the color and typography as per your project but you can just use these templates yeah feel free to use them as well these are the resources that i have i have 10 minutes now for question answer i can stop sharing and i'll uh, let me just first share this uh, link with all of you so you guys can have access of this uh anyone with the link can view sorry guys i cannot give edit access because if someone edits then other people will have problem so so i'm sharing this link with you all of you right 
feel free to you know keep it with you uh, you can share with others also no worries this is just for you all right yes sir. so uh, should we move on to the question and answers now yes sure audience you can ask your questions if uh, no one has question then there is a big problem <laughs> let me ask you this question so uh, was it a uh, 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 kind of useful session guys yes sir it was extremely useful the sort of deep dive we took into it it was very useful all right any other thoughts how was the session uh, guys hi amazing uh, hi yeah engaging engaging yeah pradyuman dhawan yeah am i audible yes aditya or rohit yeah this is aditya uh, i had yes, a question aditya. for you uh, so i wanted to know what are your views on uh, designers who create their own websites for uh, showcasing their projects so there is a kind of a big misconception there uh, people feel like uh, you know they need to have their own registered domain to have yeah. their own portfolio that's a wrong part, wrong thing um you looked at uh, you know spencer's portfolio right he has created on medium as well as on uh, uh, squarespace but uh, you know he has got most of the calls from medium so meaning that it does not matter really uh, you know it has a, like a, you get more flexibility in terms of your branding uh, you know uh, the way that you want to do you want to accommodate mm -hmm. all the different deliverables you get all that flexibility yeah. when you think about customized uh, uh, version of your portfolio but okay. uh, at present you know when you share your portfolio with hiring managers or for jobs i don't see a yeah. big difference if you have high quality work it works all right thank you thank you for that guys do i look so serious so i mean i see your face so serious so i'm just wondering i felt like you know i'll be meeting you guys and i was super excited because again i want to be like you guys i mean being a student is wonderful opportunity you know in the world i miss that part uh, oh so yes, i oh uh, yeah go ahead yeah oh so i have a question uh, suppose if we have a project which has multiple personas so right. is it necessary to put all of them or can we just uh, no. like make it short and put it in just one slide No, no, no. You need to put uh, multiple personas also, but you need to give details about each persona, how they are different. Okay. See, if you look at uh, Spencer portfolio, one thing for sure, for each deliverable, you need to have what and why part. Let's say, for example, you have a uh, you know two persona, right? You will mention what is this person all about and why you have kept it. Okay. Similarly, second persona, what is this person about? How it is different than the first persona and why you have kept it. you need to give reasoning about each and every deliverable in your case study and you have to have multiple persona it's absolutely fine absolutely fine also if you go with multiple persona then empathy map will be also multiple it's absolutely fine it works right uh, so sir is there any upper end to how many slides in one project should we have no no upper limit it should be engaging enough that they should go to the end and they should reach out to you should be engaging it should be kind of a story If you look at the language that Spencer has used, it's kind of you know like he's as if he's communicating with uh, us. Like you know, let's start with the project now, or you know, it's time to start uh, stage one. Something like more engaging as a storytelling, you know, way to write your story. Ah, uh, Dhawal, I have a question. Yes, Roy. A lot of things that uh, you know you've spoken about. Um, we've heard uh, you know these multiple times. We've been doing iconic sessions since three years now. Been doing the podcast, other things, um, and uh, more as a mentor, I want to ask you this question: that uh, while there is so much content that exists in terms of what are the things that should be done, why do you still think there is a gap? Why don't uh, these students the, or people follow the, it? the biggest problem that i have seen and rohit this is super funny okay uh, i've been getting lot of queries on linkedin you know about how to start how to start that's the most common question i have seen the more the material available the biggest problem it is so it's a kind of uh, you know a research analysis that happens and it's kind of a uh, we call it as a research paralysis as well 
So you get stuck when you have a lot of material, you don't know how to start. That's why I created this specific checklist. You know, when you have a lot of case studies in your place, again, you will be stuck. Like, you know, what should I keep? What should I not keep? And this creates a kind of lot of confusion. You don't get started. You just get blocked. And that's the biggest fundamental issue, you know, uh, uh, for all of the newcomers, especially. So what I, uh, what I intend to say is like, you know, uh, whatever you think as a kind of a starting point, just think about going from zero to one, not 200. Start, start with something, get it reviewed from at least three designers that you know, whoever it can be, right? Like you can look at ADP list and they have, uh, you know, listed so many Indian designers, as well as you can reach out to, you know, designers from Google, Facebook, et cetera. They're really good. They will respond to you. They'll give you, you know, honest feedback. And it's worth getting feedback at earlier stage than at later stage, you know? After you get rejection from many companies, it's not good. Get it at early stage, make sure you fix all the changes and then apply. Or, or make other way around, like make your personal identity so strong that people should reach out to you. So you mentioned we need to get feedback, but at what stage would you recommend to get feedback? Like uh, during the research aspect only when you finalize onto a problem? Your, your question, your question isn't very, I mean, we can't, you know, hear you crystal clear. Can you? Raj, can you be a little bit louder perhaps? Am I audible now? Yeah. Uh, better than previously. So I wanted to know at what stage would you be seeking for feedback? Like when you have already finalized on your problem statement and arrived at a solution or when you like what stage exactly? Because see, uh, most of the times what you do, if you follow the design thinking methodology, there are different ways that you can capture feedback, right? Um, the first is like uh, uh, at earlier stage, wherein you know you take a feedback based on just wireframes. That's also absolutely fine, but then your case study will change as a kind of a sequence, right? And then you have the visual design and the branding at the end. Okay, that's how it happens. The second approach is like you do a kind of a summative, uh, you know, uh, feedback loop, which is happening at the end after you have visual design. Also, that's also fine. Ideally, in reality, you know, uh, it depends on so many factors. Believe me. You know, in theory, we learn uh, everything about, you know, getting the, uh, you know, formative evaluation done for each and every project, summative evaluation done for each and every project. The interesting part is in industry, not in all projects you can do that. And that's also reality. Uh, people expect, uh, you know, especially hiring manager expect to see everything in your portfolio, but maybe you may identify they might not be even following all the processes. That is possible. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi, sir. Hi, Mayuresh. Hi, Mayuresh. Uh, so I'm an industrial designer. Uh, so I just had a, a question. Like, uh, we do have we do work on some futuristic projects uh, during our college days. So while putting that into a portfolio, uh, what kind of level should we achieve before uh, putting into into our portfolio? It is as simple as this. So if that futuristic project is uh, easy to understand, you can have it. Uh, if it is not easy to understand, I gave you an example of time travel. No one can understand from this entire group. It is very difficult. If it is like that, which does not exist and which is hard to understand, then go, don't go for it. If it is easy to understand, even though if it is futuristic, it's absolutely fine. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's like, uh, if we, uh, it's like, uh, I'm more fascinated towards uh, the automotive futuristic project. So, uh, if 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 I take a look at it, so uh, or a lot of times we need to hover around to understand what exactly uh, are they meaning by uh, doing this project. So if we have if we have some idea uh, uh, onto that thing, so how uh, should we pitch it so that uh, we get uh, uh, we get hired by the company who works for this uh, for such futuristic projects? See, you might have to uh, you know look at it uh, from two aspects. So one aspect when company looks at your portfolio, they look at your skills and they judge based on that, right? Uh, when they look at your portfolio, they want to assess your skills, whether you can do all this work or not. Now, if your portfolio consists of all futuristic projects, then it is a kind of a, a challenge, right? They need to see whether you, you are capable enough for executing realistic project the, the current uh, in current context. And also at the same time, if you are radical enough, definitely you will get advantage. It, you will surely have advantage if you are more, you know, coming up with uh, an innovative solutions as well. And when you have that sort of project, make sure that, you know, you mentioned that in your case study, it's all about, you know, futuristic idea, 
that uh, based on my assumption and thought process. And uh, in that case, perhaps you might not have some sort of secondary research also, but that's absolutely fine. Make sure you, you write it properly and showcase that entire process, which would be different than, you know, uh, uh, other case studies, but it's fine. You can have that. It's not a problem. But as I said, it should be easy to understand. You cannot have, you know, project like time travel. Sure, sir. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, so in the interest of time, uh, we'll take one last question and then we can close. Uh, uh, hi, question. sir. This is Brunmay Zoshi, this side. Uh, so I had a question regarding projects that we, uh, the third type of projects, redesign projects. So when we perform heuristic evaluation, uh, it can be pretty extensive. So do you suggest showing the entire evaluation in the portfolio or just- No, uh, top points? 10 points, top 10 points, top 10 top. issues. And then you can have a link where you can, you know, uh, where if one is interested enough, can go there and see the entire report. That link can be of Google Drive. Okay, you can keep yeah, the PDF right. and let them read it if they want. Okay, so thank you. So the, the link in the resources uh, where you see, you know, uh, a portfolio of Arti and uh, Meghna, you will see how they have documented everything. They have provided links in between. Wherever they, there is a kind of a more comprehensive report, they will just put a link in between the content. So it becomes easier. Right, yeah. Thank we'll you. take a question from Pradyuman as well. He was asking and then we'll wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I just had a bit of a technical question when it comes to applications and uh, websites that uh, how important is it for us to understand that how heavy designs we should be putting in? Like when you see Spencer's uh, portfolio, it is quite heavy on the database side. Like it's got a lot of information on it and it may, may take time uh, loading. So will the hiring authorities also take that into consideration? Uh, so when it comes to, you know, freshers, especially they do not really have that expectation. Um, but when it comes to, you know, some sort of senior position, definitely, yes. Um, you know, people try to understand uh, your knowledge about, uh, not in depth, but at least technical knowledge. Uh, let's say in, in this case, I can tell you immediately based on my experience that it won't take much time to, you know, load this because there are new databases which are, which are available like MongoDB and all. So which can make this faster. So... But this knowledge has come after you know many years, right? Uh, and and eventually you will also get that knowledge. So you can answer uh, you know the the hiring manager based on that. But ideally, what they seek right now it's like how uh, you know you are designing beyond uh, you know the technical limitations. If you think about technical limitation, you are dead from day one. You will not have good results. Results. So as so, a, as a master student, uh, is it necessary for me to mention those kind of databases in my portfolio so they know that all. I have? Not at all. Not if you mention, it will create a kind of a problem. So it's an advantage if you don't have technical knowledge. It is an advantage because you go beyond all these limitations. If you have a knowledge, you will always try to find a simplistic solution. That's not what we do. So as a computer engineer, I do have a lot of which is stopping my progress because I know for a fact that it's going to be difficult. Uh, for no, purpose. you don't have to worry about that because uh, look, look at like the companies like Amazon or you know other companies, they have hundreds of de developers working on this. I mean, there will be just two or three designers and hundred developers. Whatever you design, they will pick it up and make sure that they will develop. So it's not our duty. Our duty is to make sure that we s simplify uh, the solution and we make sure that we deliver the best and uh, better experience for our end user. Thank you. If thank we you so start much. thinking about technical limitation, we'll stop our creativity. Immediately we'll stop. So should not be doing that. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a very insightful uh, session. Sir, just one more question. Yes. So some uh, similar to what uh, Pradyuman asked. So I belong to ID background, industrial design background. And sometimes we also design very technical products which are only feasible for the market. So right. we just keep only those projects in the portfolio or should we go beyond? Uh, so if it is not feasible, at least you should have a mix of, uh, you know, other projects as well. Something feasible and non-feasible, both can be a kind of a, a good combination. See, if you keep only futuristic projects which are kind of hard to build, uh, again, you know, uh, it can create a problem. So let's have something realistic plus futuristic. Okay. Yeah. By the way, at last, I just want to share one thought and that because you, you, you know, like a, a Prashita and others 
they are designers coming from different uh, you know uh, branches like industrial design um, there is a book called uh, vinelli kenen okay and uh, which which mentions one thing and that's a kind of a quote of the day for all of you it's like design is one meaning that you know uh, if it's a, a you know a graphic design interaction design ux design ui design a product design all these design streams what this author mentions is like design is one what as a designer you do you solve the problem with the same process even though you do a chair design it is the same process even though you do a machine design it is the same even though you do a mobile app or web it is the same so with that i finish design is one yes yeah, so that's a very beautiful thought of design is one and uh, as we near the end of the session i would like to thank you sir for taking out the time and conducting this session the way we went through the session the comparison and the checklist and all it was very very engaging and helpful for us we wish you the best of luck for all your future endeavors and uh, sir pradyuman wants to know the name of the book so yeah you... it's called vinelli kenan vinelli kenan uh, massimo vinelli was a designer from italy and he designed everything like you know he designed the metro map uh, first metro map of uh, new york okay and uh, he designed also some buildings in in italy and he has done also uh, you know digital as well as uh, web uh, digital as well as uh, paper uh, print designs as well vinelli canon you can write it and the cover is a uh, red book cover okay thank you so much sir okay.